Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's David Dufour here, owner of DeFord Insurance Group. I've got Mr. Kurt here. Kurt, say hello. Hello, everyone. And Kurt hello, is a, David. Uh, yeah, hey, thanks for being here. Kurt's a new agent who has agreed to do a um, one-on-one consultation with me. I do these kind of content where I interview agents who aren't necessarily part of my agency to kind of basically help them out without any sort of charge or expectation. And the purpose of this video is to do just that. We're going to be spending the next 20 to 25 minutes answering whatever questions Kurt has, and I'm going to do my job as best as I can to help him out. So, Kurt, why don't you uh, briefly tell us about yourself and then jump right into your questions on how I can help you. Well, basically, I am a semi-retired engineer who was recently uh, introduced to uh, the concept of selling life insurance. And because I'm semi-retired, meaning I don't want to do nothing, I decided to look into this and I decided to get a, an agent license, which I did in the state of California, where I was residing until one month ago. Uh, then I moved to Arizona. I'm now in uh, Chino Valley, which is near Prescott, Arizona. And uh, it's a totally foreign experience. The town is maybe 12,000 people. And I grew up in the, <laughs> the suburbs of Los Angeles with Different. millions of people surrounding me. All right. So what can I do for you today, Kurt? What questions you got? Well, first... Uh, my goal is to get going and sell insurance. And my first challenge is to understand uh, what I can do when I pick up the phone to call somebody. Right now, I, I have seen scripts and I've, I, I've, I've used scripts in some uh, instances, but can you give me a real a simple uh, starting um, procedure. Sure. So this, so, so just to make sure I'm clear, we're looking for kind of some script guidance on how to get into the door, essentially, right? That's right. Okay, perfect. So real simple here. Um, let me let me step back because when I give a script, I just don't like to give a script, Kurt. I also like to explain the behavior behind it or the psychology. I think compliance from agents in the strategies that we teach is better if the agent understands the why, right? If you believe and understand why you do what you do, you're more likely to follow through, right? So with, with the appointment setting script, here's the premise of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get into the door and say as little as possible to use the leverage an in-person presentation gives us to win the person over their trust, their rapport, and to get them and convince them to buy from us. There he is, Hey, And the thing is, is why you can sell over the phone, the activity of getting in the home gives you an unprecedented leverage relative to telesales and to convincing a stranger to hand over their money and buy from you. But here's the thing. If we say too much as a face-to-face -face agent on the phone about the product, about what we're doing, then it gives the prospect reason to turn you down. It's an interesting business, the case of dealing with people and, and convincing them to buy from you. They'll push and give resistance, uh, but that's not necessarily meaning they'll actually buy. People are essentially in the presentation process or the appointment setting process afraid of risk. But you're a stranger, stranger danger, coming into their house? Are you a salesperson? So people say things to rid themselves of you that they may not half-heartedly believe. Um, and it takes a strategy of relieving the stress of letting them know what to get about and that it's no big obligation or big deal. And then closing with some assertiveness, and we'll teach you how to do all this script-wise, in order to win them over. It's very much, uh, and then you're going to get pushback but it's very much like, do you have kids, Kurt? Sorry, what? Do you have children? Yes, and grandchildren. So I'm sure a grandkid has come up to you at some point and said, hey, uh, Grandpa Kurt, uh, it's 10 in the morning. 
can you get me an ice cream cone? And I'm sure you responded by saying, uh, of course not. And then perhaps the more salesman of the grandchildren said, please, or how about I'll clean my room if I do it, right? They negotiate with you. And sometimes you might just give in, right? I found this out as a parent. And that's like a recurring weekly occurrence with my four-year-old who has, you know, big Mr. Dave authority here wrapped around her finger. So the point is sometimes what you sound like, you'll push back and resist as the parent, grandparent or the prospect. But if you come back as the pro, as the agent, you'll win some of those over. So again, why, and, and you'll sound convincing when you say it, but um, in short order, you find out you really didn't care that much. And you're just like, oh, well, no big deal. So all of this is to say, this is the element of prospecting and setting appointments. So here's how the script sounds. I'm going to use final expense here. But if you want to kind of tell me after I'm done kind of what you're selling, I can custom tailor it. Uh, but the fundamentals still remain. It doesn't really matter what you're selling. This is a traditional classic way to get in the door. So they pick up the phone. They've respond. They've had to have responded to some kind of information. That's the key thing. An ad online, piece in the mail. The purpose and, and what you say is the following. Uh, they say, hello. You say, hey, Kurt, this is David Duford. I'm getting back to you about some information you requested in the mail about our new state regulated final expense programs. I see that you're 60 years old. And the reason I'm calling is it's my job to deliver this information that you request and what you do with it's entirely up to you. I'll be in your area tomorrow and wondered if I could stop by at 10 o'clock or two o'clock. So what we've done there, Kurt, I'll kind of, if, do you mind if I go back and kind of break it down or do you have any questions so far? No, I, that was very, very clear. Okay. So a couple of things that are interesting about using the phone. First of all, the, the phone interaction, it's important that you control the circumstances. Okay. You are the one initiating the circumstance, the call. You have to control it to get to the end where we ask which time they want me over. So you have to regulate in the, the way that you speak. So you'll notice I kind of sounded like I did a run on sentence. There was very little pause there, right? I didn't ask you, hey, this is Kurt, right? Or do you remember sending that card back? Because what happens is I've asked you a question. And when you ask a question, you're waiting for a response from the prospect. Well, guess what the prospect sometimes will say? I don't remember sending that and I'm not interested by. In other words, you've given them the right <laughs> to control the conversation and shut it down before you get any further. So the, the number one thing about appointment setting effectively is the making sure that you don't give a premature opportunity to the prospect to interject and start wrangling control from you, okay? Now, um, so you picked up the phone in this hypothetical example. Kurt sounds like a male, so I'm just gonna assume it's a male. I'm gonna assume it's you. So I don't say, hey, may I speak to Kurt, please? That sounds like I'm a telemarketer and it already kind of messes with your perception in a negative way. So I just assume it's you. Hey, Kurt, this is David Duford getting back to you. So I introduce myself. Notice I don't say the company name. Why? Because if I say, hey, I'm David Duford. I work with Mutual of Omaha. What, what are people going to think? It's an insurance agent. <laughs> it's, it's, what? It's an, so they're going to think it's an insurance agent. Oh, so, okay. They're, yeah. they're going to be yeah. sold. And so the brain starts to shut down and stop, stops listening. You know, it's like, oh, salesperson, that's the 12th person that's called today, right? You know, so this is, we don't say the name of the company we're with because we want them to listen to us. And saying things too early is going to cause problems, like specifically about the company. So my name is David Duford, or hey, this is David Duford. I'm getting back to you about that information requested through the mail about our new state regulated final expense program. So we introduce ourselves and then we tell them why we're calling them. So we go right into, hey, you did this. You sent off a card requesting information about our new state regulated final expense program. If they did it on Facebook, I would say, hey, you're on Facebook. You filled out a form requesting information about our new state regulated final expense program or our, our new program to cover your mortgage, whatever it is that you're selling. Um, but, but I want to describe the action that they took and what information they requested, because we're catching them like, imagine they're in the middle of, of cooking and the TV's going, they're mad about something their spouse said earlier, and then we call them. Their mind is wrapped elsewhere. So we have to give them information to help jog their memory. 
because right now they're sort of engaged, but not entirely. So this is a way to, to, to remind them of what they did. Um, notice I don't say insurance. I said state regulated final expense program. I don't say insurance very much for the same reason I don't say uh, uh, Mutual of Omaha or the company I'm with. Yeah, because insurance, when people are solicited for insurance, the brain shuts down. They think salesperson, they're going to sell me something, even if they want to buy it. They just don't want to deal with salespeople. So we say we describe what it is in another way to help keep their mind open. Again, it's not an intent here to de deceive. It's an intent to avoid the predictable human behavior we all have, which is avoiding salespeople. Okay. So, and, but describing it in a way that's accurate, but in more words than, than this the accurate word, which tends to you know, shut down the brain. So I'm calling you about the new state regulated final expense insurance uh, information you requested. Um, I see that you're 60 years old. I, I make that as a statement, Kurt. And, and, and on the card, you may not know this, it li you list your age. If you buy a Facebook lead, you list your favorite hobby, maybe your favorite hobby is fishing, right? But I'm not going to say it says that you're 60 years old, right? Problem with that is, uh, well, no, actually, no, I'm 55. Bye, you got the wrong number. We're going, now they're taking control. What is this about, right? So we just confirm it as a statement of fact. And I see that your age is 60. And the reason I'm calling, so I just say it and I don't allow that person to interject. Then I go into, uh, again, kind of an explanation of what I'm doing. I sell the appointment at this point to lower their expectations of, am I going to be sold? Is this something I need to be worried about? So the reason I'm calling, it's my job to deliver this information, delivering, as opposed to saying to sell you a policy, I'm delivering them information. What you do with it's entirely up to you. That means, hey, there's no risk here. I'm just delivering information, no obligation. And then you do what's called close, Kurt. And the way that we close is we set the appointment. So I'm going to be in your area tomorrow. Why don't I stop by at 10 o'clock or two? Now, notice the way that I closed for the appointment. Can I come at this time or that time? What I didn't do is I didn't say, can I come tomorrow at 10? Because your option is either a yes or a no. And when you're given an option to say no, guess what? People are going to say no. But by the way we framed our language, we give the option of either a 10 o'clock or a two o'clock. You can, you can say yes to this, Kurt, or you can say yes to that. So I've eliminated to an extent the yeah. option for a no. <clears throat> so I'm more likely gonna get a yes since I framed the close with a yes, we call it the alternate yes strategy of booking an appointment. And that's, that's all you have to do. Any questions there? <laughs> No, that's uh, that's one of the best uh, in intros and closing statements I think I've ever heard. And I've been in sales for a lot of years. Oh, good. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Very possibly more years than you've been alive. <laughs> so you're not 60? <laughs> a little older than 60, maybe? <laughs> well, good. I appreciate that. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. So... Uh... And then real quick, because you can't have a, an appointment setting script without a rebuttal script or a rebuttal script, right? Because you will always have pushback, even from people who will buy from you. So you have to anticipate objections and know how to deal with them. We have a very simple uh, foundational, stra fundamental strategy that works pretty much no matter what they say. They may say things like, I'm broke, I'm busy, I've already got life insurance, I don't need any. I'm not interested. Those are kind of the five most common. Well, the response to all of those is the same. We call it the ASK rebuttal. ASC is the acronym. A means answer the objection. S means sell the appointment. C means close. So here's how it sounds. I'm busy. That's okay. All I need is five minutes to do my job and what you do with it's up to you. If you're busy at 10 or two, why don't I swing by at four to six work better? I'm broke. Hey, that's fine. It's just my job to deliver this information to you. What you do with it's up to you. So does two o'clock work or should I swing by at four? I've already got life insurance. Hey, that's fine. It's just my job to deliver this information that you requested. What you do with it's up to you. How about I swing by at 10 or would eight o'clock at night work better? So you see where we're going here? It doesn't matter what they say because we can't believe what they're saying. It may be a lie. It may be truth. But many times people put a smoke screen up in an objection. 
And so we can't, and this took me a long time to accept this. We can't accept that as gospel truth. So, um, but what we do know about most objections is that they're not objecting on a logical basis. They're objecting on an emotional basis. You're a risk, you're a stranger. He's coming to my house. He's trying to sell me something. So we have to sell, not to that objection per se, but to the, hey, it's okay. All I need is five minutes. What you do with this is up to you. And then I'll be on the way. Yeah. That You're going to do your job. It, this is a, it's, it's, a brilliant, it's a brilliant way to go through it. Thank you. And it works. It works. It works in 2022. And nothing I'm saying here is like profoundly new. It's, it's, you know, it's like bell bottoms back in the nineties and two thousands. I mean, that was from the sixties, right? It's just reinvented. I mean, it's the same old stuff that's always worked and it answers the objections that we all have to strangers. And if you get good at presenting this and you're warm in your response, you're non-threatening, you got a little energy to you and you're resilient with it. And you push back two or three times. Sometimes it takes, you will get into a lot of doors and people who are pushy with you on the phone, you get in they're they're, 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 they're just nice. They're, they're completely different. Uh, it's a strange thing using the phone to get in, but. So I have a, I have a very important question about. Yeah, please go for it. Uh, I've been told by other companies that, that uh, their best way to sell is by zoom meetings and therefore they can sell to people who are impossible to visit in their home, which opens up the entire world to potential sales. Sure. What is your uh, take on that? You so, concentrated right here on getting into a house. Sure. So the, the history with Zoom sales, and, and this is all going to trend this way ultimately, is as the world becomes more remote and you can do business on a larger scale geographically that Zoom based type of sales would be there, just like telesales. But all this kind of spun off with the, the lockdowns a couple of years ago and, and a lot of organizations were selling product and they just weren't good on the phone. So they utilized and came up with the Zoom based strategy. I like Zoom. I mean, obviously we're using it right now in our interview. Um, but just like anything in life, there's always difficulties. There's always issues. One of the thing with Zoom meetings is that, yes, it, it's good. It, it's helpful. But compared to face-to-face, -face, you're not going to have as many people show up. You know, you don't, there's something about showing up at the door. It's harder to turn somebody away. You're there on your front doorstep. It just takes a few minutes. It's easier to negotiate and get what you want in person versus some kind of intermediary, whether it's the phone or Zoom. So, um, but nevertheless, Zoom works. Um, but it's, I need it's, to I need to uh, give you a little more information about my situation. Yeah, sure. Uh, I am of Icelandic heritage. Ah, okay. Um, my father was pure Icelandic, and uh, and so what I've discovered is that I have uh, basically everyone in Iceland is, is a cousin of another yeah. Icelander. Sure. <laughs> and I connected with a cousin who's in Fargo, North Dakota, and she is involved in genealogy, and she has created an Icelandic roots website, which uh -huh. allowed her to trace me back to a father who in 1683 had children who had us. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so we That's are cool. seventh cousins. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> now, the reason I bring that up is that um, the I have th thousands of cousins all over North Dakota and Canada. Sure. And so my plan and goal is to engage them in discussion about insurance. Okay. And therefore, it's imperative, uh, I believe, uh, that, excuse me, that I have to uh, that I have to do this by Zoom. Okay. Because of course I can't visit North Dakota or Canada very easily. Right. So my goal here is to to sell remotely. Right. Now, um, uh, what what. Uh, 
what, can, do you have a, a good, um, what can I say, uh, a good uh, pitch for setting up a Zoom sale? Yeah, it's, you, so you could start the process, and I, this, it depends on how the lead is generated. So that's kind of the missing element here. Well, if you're, my, my leads are generated from my family tree. Okay. <laughs> everyone, so, everyone in who's Icelandic is a, is a cousin, and therefore they're uh, they're a lead. So you're calling them to get to know them first, or you're just cold calling them? Hey, we're related. Get on a Zoom call with me. Like, to what extent are you having a relationship first before you do the Zoom call? Well, the direct answer is I do expect to. Uh, to uh, lead with the uh, Icelandic uh, re relation. Okay. And then, and then go, and then move into uh, the question, uh, or or move into basically uh, a, a statement that uh, since we're cousins, and I'm thinking out loud here, thinking on the fly. Um, I want to show you a, a new program that I think you would really benefit from as a Icelandic cousin of mine, something like that. Okay. And I, I, and I appreciate your time on this because clearly I'm a little bit uh, fuzzy so far on exactly how I want to do this. Sure. Well, so for me, if the rapport, if no matter what kind of lead pr or prospecting process you're using, um, as long as you have rapport and trust established, you know, at some point in the conversation or the interaction, whether that's over the phone or in per or, or through email, um, if you've created a connection, then asking somebody to jump on a Zoom to explain things shouldn't be that much farther of a jump. It's when you're doing it cold without that that, okay, it's, it's a little more difficult because they don't know who you are and what is this about? Yeah. You got to have some kind of leverage to ask them favors, right? So if yeah. you're starting, my point is, I don't think it's that complicated if what you're doing here is what you're going to end up, the strategy is going to be, which is creating a connection based off of heritage. And then from there, uh, however you get into the conversation, offer them the opportunity to pop on and explain some things or show them something they may be interested in because of your connection. You're going to get some people who take you up on it, some people that don't. There's always going to be that percentage. And um, then you just send them the Zoom link and do your thing. So no, I don't see any, um, I don't have any objections. I don't, from what you're doing, I don't, it doesn't need to be any more sophisticated than that. If you're doing lead generation, like purchase leads or direct mail or digital leads and maybe a little bit more than that, but this is a bit different. So I don't think it's that complicated to execute. Well, that's good to hear. And uh, having been through this and I appreciate your time and your, your expertise and your advice. Um, I, uh, this is perfect timing because I have a goal to work this program very hard very very soon like today <laughs> sorry kurt you're coming now, in a little uh i don't know about uh, how my yeah well i'm my internet connection is uh crude uh, because uh, i've moved and and i'm using my phone as a hotspot, so it's working all right now. It's I'm back. amazed that I'm amazed this is working as well as it is right now. <laughs> Good, yeah, I know you said you it, just moved. In so. general, you have come through almost perfectly smooth this entire time. That's good, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got any final questions for you, Kurt? Before we wrap it up. Well, tell me. Um, whether I should consider joining your agency instead of doing what I'm doing. Yeah, so the, the main difference in what we do is we, you think of it this way, we have, you're an engineer, so hopefully this will connect. 
we have a system, right, that we know that if an agent employs uh, and follows through with, that the likelihood of success, the output is going to be success. And so what we tend to do to scale that system to more agents and to help them get success in this business is we don't recreate what we already have that works. And I say all this because what our system demands of us and the way that I recruit is I find agents that are willing to basically duplicate the blueprint or the processes that we already have in place. And so what that means in, in, in regards to you is that to work with us, you'd have to focus, and this is kind of the elements of our system, you'd have to focus on one of the following systems, either a final expense sales process, a Medicare process, uh, or an ACA process, health insurance. Most agents end up doing final expense. Some do Medicare to start with. And you can do those face-to-face -face or over the phone. The second thing that we do is we have a complete sales and, and system that you learn. You just plug and play, discipline yourself to study it, practice it, and prepare it. But the biggest difference between what you and I do is I wouldn't have you doing this um, system where you're relying on basically fraternal connections, if you will, a distant ones. Um, instead, what we do is not to say that what you are going to do is not going to work, but we're ha we have a higher level of success by just simply following a marketing system that's more congruent with the product that you're selected. So like, for example, in final expense, we'd want you to utilize the final expense system, at least to start with our paid marketing system. So you have to invest your money into a direct mail lead program, if you're face-to-face, -face, if you're over the phone, some kind of digital lead program or where the leads call you on an inbound basis. And um, yes, it does cost money. You do have to invest it. But again, this is a system that we're kind of basically selling to the agents. Hey, look, you can, you can extract money out of the insurance market if you put into action the system at a high enough level of activity. So that's how it would have to work with us to start. Um, I would say what you would do would be fine over the longer haul after you get some sustained success with what it is that we teach. Um, and that's basically it. Any questions? Yes. Roughly how much would I need to have in the bank to get started in this paid lead thing? Uh, if you do telesales on a weekly, are you doing this part-time or full-time? Part-time. 500 a week, roughly, give or take. And the thing too, Kurt, is what I tell agents all the time is, if you join my agency, you go through the sales and tr sales training process. And when, you when you're ready to sell and you get on the phone and start calling people to sell them, you should see results in your first week if this business is for you. The unique thing about final expense is that it's a one call close and people who don't make sales for the most part really don't make it in the business. It's either not a good fit with my agency or the, the business itself isn't a good fit. So it's nothing that you have to do six months or 12 months before you might get it or you might break even. You should be profitable within your first month to two months tops. So- That's um, good. So what is ACA? Health insurance. Obamacare, Biden care, Trump care. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, actually, it actually has gotten a lot better to sell in the last couple of years, I never would have imagined pitching it. I mean, the agent was basically removed from the market when Kathleen Sebelius came in during the Obama administration and decimated the individual insurance market. But now it's a stable market. It's not tumultuous like it was in the beginning. And the carriers are starting to pay good commissions and really good bonuses. And it's, it's kind of one of those markets that I think we'll actually see more traction out of in the next couple of years. And I, I don't think, um, you know, there was some push to get rid of Obamacare and ACA, you know, during the Trump administration. I think it's here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. So yeah. here's another market you can look at, too. Well, thank you, David. This has Decker. been enlightening. Hey, I, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, if I can help in any way, let me know, Kurt. Thanks very much. I will. All right. See you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.